Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Tokyo Dark. Before we go any further, down in the comment section, I will try to remember to put a timestamp link down there for you guys so that you can click on it and be jumped ahead because we're going to do a little bit of prep here before we begin recording this part. Um, it should take like three minutes or so. But if you don't care about that, and it's not going to, hopefully, it won't affect the game at all. Um, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm rambling already. But click on that link and you'll be jumped ahead to where we actually start playing the game. So I need to apologize, everyone, for the slow uploads of this series. Uh, I have been extremely tired over the past two weeks since I've been, I was put on some new meds for my heart. And, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm so tired all the time. <laughs> and in a game like Tokyo Dark, where there's a lot of talking, I need to keep the amount of yawning or the amount of times I doze off while recording to a minimum because I have not been able to summon the amount of awakeness to record Tokyo Dark. I'm very nervous about recording Tokyo Dark when I'm really tired because it auto-saves. There is no saving manually in this game. And so, well, it's, it's, it's tough to fit this into schedule at the moment or find a time when I can do it when I'm not falling asleep in my chair while the recording session is going ongoing. I also moved my computer back to the bedroom. Uh, this was done because it's the end of September. Unfortunately, it's still a little too humid. Uh, so, mm. I moved the computer in here because I have a much nicer setup in here for this computer and the monitor rather than the den. But unfortunately, my AC is still in here. It was supposed to come out of the windows this weekend. But it, no, it's, it's not going to happen. It's going to have to probably wait till next weekend before I can take it down and out of the windows. It's still still 80 degrees and still humid, so I still need the ACs in the house. Uh, basically, what this means is that the acoustics have changed for my recordings as well. So all, I had them be messing with my audio settings, and I dreaded doing that because it took me about 35 minutes or so to get them into a state where I think things are finally good. And now that I think things are finally good, and I believe I'll be awake enough to record this for like another 45 minutes or so, let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. In the last episode of Tokyo Dark, we had... We had already met the Collector. We had gone back to the town where we had gotten the mask from. Was that... Uh, where where was that? One second. I don't I don't actually remember the names. Oh, and I can't leave this place. Okay, so we went back there and we discovered that the cherry blossoms are blooming a second time there, which apparently is something that happens like every year there. But everyone was acting really surprised, so I get the impression that's not the case. We were told a a myth about the Japanese gods whose name I cannot remember, either of them, because it's been a week since the last recorded, <laughs> but how one of them tried to save his love from the underworld. And when he finally got to see her, she was horrific looking, filled with, like, with worms and stuff like this. And he fled, and she was furious at him for leaving him there after that. I get the impression that myth is in particular told to us because we are trying to save our partner slash boyfriend. And he is missing. He was taken into the dark, wherever that is. While in that town, we also met, uh, and it was the grandmom of Mai, I think is her name. The pink-haired girl at the shrine who Reina, the red-headed uh, pigtailed girl, Held, had held hostage originally, and we had shot Reyna to free Mai. Mai wants to know the truth about what is happening, and so she has agreed to come with us here. We are going to go to the dojo in this location and visit her brother. Her brother was very cold to us, recognized us as being part of the reason why his sister freaked out for a month. And the police apparently didn't care very much for Mai, or check up on her after the incident which happened. In any case, we are here with Mai. Let's go and see if the brother will be a little more forthcoming with information now that we have her with us here. Inside is the interior of a traditional tea shop, but it doesn't look like anyone's been there recently. I 
I think every time we buy octopus balls, we we gain sanity, but we lose neurosis. Is that correct? Speaking of that, what is my what's my current levels? We should always do that at the start. So we have we are stable in sanity, professional for our professionalism, meticulous of our investigation, and relaxed for neurosis. I think we're looking pretty good. I'm a little worried now about my neurosis. I don't know how to increase that. But our sanity is, is holding pretty steady at the moment, and only negative 18, so we're not in any danger of going insane, at least. And I think it was right, yep, right here. This looks like the dojo I was looking for. It has a very traditional aesthetic. My! What are you doing here? Did she make you come? It's not like that, Takashi. It was my idea. I asked her to come to talk with you, but you sent her away. This woman almost got you killed. You expect me to cooperate with her? Surely if you need to talk to me, you can come yourself. My sister doesn't need to be involved. No. If I came alone, you just evade all my questions like you always do. Besides, there's something I need you to see. See what? What are you talking about? <gasps> Where did you get that? Put it away! So you do know what it is. I knew you were hiding something from me. That's not true. I wasn't hiding it. It's not something you ever needed to know about. Besides, why is she carrying it in the first place? Wait, don't change the subject. This isn't about Ito. My, I understand that you're upset with me, but we should talk about this another time. Furthermore, that mask has nothing to do with you. You're wrong. Back in April, when Mai was held at knife point by another girl, it was this mask that girl was after. A mask your family is connected to. Looking for it? I suppose I've been a fool to think I could keep the truth of our family's past away from you. The past? Does this have to do with mom and dad? Yes. And so much more. I first saw that mask when I was a child, before you were born. The truth is, it belonged to a cult called the Kamen Kai, of which our parents were members. A cult? You're kidding! How do your parents get mixed up in that? I know how it sounds. I find it hard to believe myself. I actually have three friends who have ended up in cults in my life. It's amazing. In so much that they're all extremely intelligent people. And they all fall for it. I don't understand them. It, to me, it's just proof that no matter how smart you are, you can get roped into these things very easily if you're not very careful and not critical of things you're being told. Anyway, let's get back to the game. They were a group led by a guru named Tokimasa, who promised a simpler life away from the hypocrisy and falseness of city life. Our parents both had master's degrees, and my mother was on her way to earning her PhD. They chose to give up their lives and their careers to follow some mystic and live on a compound instead. Eh, uh, sounds familiar. My friends didn't actually live in a compound, but they got involved in things that... and... Only one of them got out of it, too. I haven't even heard from my other friends since they joined cults. The Kamen Kai were one of many such groups back then. I was a child and didn't understand, but thinking about how our parents were deceived and what they put me and my through, it's unforgivable. The mask was on the compound, but for what purpose or what they believed it could do, I don't know. Oh, this sounds a bit like the Cthulhu cult. In the Call of Cthulhu, H.P. Lovecraft, because um, they found these statues, which were crude carvings of Cthulhu, made of some type of rock that uh, was not native to the area which it had been found in. Do you think there were any members of the Kamen Kai who left who know? No. You see, there are no surviving members. They died. All of them. Including our parents. I'm sorry. I don't remember much about it. One night, Grandma came into the room where we were sleeping, saying we had to go. The compound was in the woods. It was dark and I could barely see, but she kept charging forward with mine in her arms and me dragging behind. 
When we were back in Tokyo several days later, Grandma told me that our parents were dead. She didn't seem sad. It was as if she expected it. The government censored much of what happened, so I was never able to learn how they died. Me and Grandma didn't speak of it, ignoring it as if my childhood and everything that happened in those woods was all a bad dream. If it weren't for her, we'd probably be dead with our parents, but ignoring it couldn't erase the anger I felt towards them. I wonder if they even cared what might happen to us. As a high schooler, I spent more time trying to find out about the Kamen Kai than I did studying. I thought that if I could understand why my parents were so willingly gave up their lives and abandoned us, I'd stop feeling so betrayed. But I was wrong. Nothing I found gave me any peace. Mom and Dad died as part of some cult. I... I don't believe it. It's true. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I guess that in hiding it from you, I was able to hide away my feelings as well. I think for Grandma, it was too painful to talk about. I believe she took possession of the entire shrine in order to live a simpler life. We had to keep it secret. There's no way we could live a normal life with the stigma of the common Kai attached to us. I suppose keeping that secret hurt both of us dearly. For me, pursuing Kendo gave me some measure of control over my life again. But Grandma, who made a choice to leave her only daughter behind, she always seemed to carry the guilt of it with her. She started going out at night, babbling about how she was looking for Mom. When she'd come home, she would have a rotten stink on her clothes. I... I was too scared to confront her, so I tipped off the police. They found her wandering in the sewers, holding nothing but the mask. The same one from the cult compound all those years before, and the one you hold now. I was shocked when they gave it to me. I hadn't seen it for so long, and all the unpleasant memories from my past came flooding back. That was when I decided to leave Kamakura. It was the only way I could move on with my life. That doesn't account for how the mask ended up with your grandmother in the first place. I don't know how she got it. It simply appeared out of thin air. Or maybe someone gave it to her. She never said. I left the mask with her. It always made me uneasy. It had a strange aura about it. Wait, wait. Grandma was looking for Mom? In the sewers? I don't remember any of this. You were in the dorms at your school at the time. Grandma's strange behavior was part of why I insisted on you going to those private schools far away from Kamakura. I couldn't drag you into the madness of our past. We parted ways without ever speaking of it, and she was much better by the time you returned to Kamakura. Detective, what exactly is it that you're looking for? Surely our family's history isn't of use to you. I assume you've heard about what happened to my partner. This mask was there again when he died. It's more than an ornament. I need to know where it came from. If that's true, then I want to help. Your partner, he... He seemed like a nice person. No, my. You've helped me plenty, but I have to do this on my own. Ito is right. I apologize for not telling you all this sooner, but... You can't be involved in something so dangerous. I already thought I'd lost you the day at the shrine. I wouldn't forgive myself if something happened to you now. Alright. Thank you for finally telling me the truth, Takashi. I'll head back for now. I hope you remember that I'm your sister. I may not remember the same things you do, but we're still family. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for your help, Mai. You're right, Mai. I'll come visit you soon. It looks like she's gone. Mai's not here. There's no need to be coy. No doubt taking possession of that mask has taken its toll on you. Even in the brief time I was in contact with it, I felt an immense darkness behind it. I had such strange dreams and saw things I would never have dreamed up on my own. There was always an unusual air about it that I couldn't stand to be around. Maybe lying to Mai again makes me a hypocrite. All I know is I don't want her getting hurt. But like you said, I don't believe that mask is simply wood and paint. Though I doubt anyone else would believe us. No one ever did. Except... For one man. On this street, there's an old tea shop. Perhaps you saw it on the way in? An old historian named Yashu... Wow, hold on. 
Yasushiya is there occasionally. He was the only one who even acknowledged what I said about the mask as truth. If you're looking for information on the mask, he may be the best person to ask. I never pursued the topic with him, but I speak with him occasionally on other topics. His mind is a vault of valuable information. Hopefully he can shed some light on what this really is. I hope so, but please detective, be careful. Thank you, Takashi. Oh, that was right down the street, so we will go to that. A really quick, more... Um, how should I say this? Some quick levity to the situation. I've noticed that in many of the... Japanese games that I play that uh, can they have some sort of like food crafting system in them or there's there's food in them and it will show your character eating them the maids are very cute your character uh, will often comment how delicious it is and stuff of this sort and they do stuff with your stats uh, this is like the fourth Japanese game I I've played that has this kind of mechanic in it uh, the the not Castlevania game that had the girl with the flower tattoos had this mechanic in it. Odin Sphere had this mechanic in it. And what was it called? Uh, Marasuma? Another game by the company that made Odin Sphere had that mechanic in it as well. I really like it. It's, it's interesting, and it, it encourages me to go out and find all the ingredients to create uh, the, the food I want to eat. This, uh, I mean, I guess this game doesn't have crafting in it, but still has a, a food, like, we can eat some food, we recover some sanity, we lose some neurosis. Um, it's, it's interesting, it's an interesting way to go about your, your stat recovery. I, I kind of like it. It seems a little more friendly than drinking healing potions or taking uh, pills to heal you as well. Welcome. Uh, come in. Do sit down. No need to be so formal and stand there like a statue. How can I help you? Are you Yasuhisa? Are you Yasuhisa? Oh, I, I said Yasuhisa last time. Yasuhisa, Takashi told me to come speak with you. Oh? And how is Mr. Kanawa? Is still prickly as ever, I suppose. I have always found him to be wise beyond his years, though perhaps not by choice. Uh, I digress. My apologies. It's, it's the quirks that come with old age, you know. What does Mr. Kawana think I can help you with? I'm looking into a few things related to the common Kai, the group his family got mixed up in. Ah, a more difficult answer than you might expect. You see... There are two groups that share that name. The first, as you know, is the religious group formed by the Guru Tokimasa. The second is an ancient order over a thousand years old. Oh, what's that you're holding? I was told it's related to the Kamen Kai, uh, the newer one, and that you could tell me about it. That explains many things, child. The far-off look in your eyes, for one. I imagine you have many, many questions. Masks are interesting, are they not? They are meant to be a disguise. But the mask cannot lie or contort itself to hide the truth. In that sense, it is the mask that is more truthful than the human faces we hide underneath them. I wonder how you came to be in possession of an object with such a dark history. I think it might be related to the missing person. I ate missing person, but I don't know anything about it beyond that. Ah, but that itself is the essence of history. Layers upon layers of personal connections that they're all continuously peeled back to the root. Relics like the one you hold often take unusual roots to where they end up. Relic. If it's from the Kamen Kai cult from the 90s, then I'd hardly call it a relic. 
misguided and deceptive as he was, Tokimasa was no fool. In order to gain new followers, he needed to give his cult historical legitimacy. He collected obscure objects and gave them new meanings that he could control in order to manipulate his followers. The mask was one he chose, along with the name of the group that created it. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Only... I guess I was hoping you could tell me some other things about it. Uh, for instance... Like, why... Uh, I'm about to say it out loud, it sounds silly. I'm sorry I bothered you. Don't be silly! You wonder, for example... Why holding the mask seems to take you to another place. Or perhaps... Why you can see visions that don't seem real. Why you feel a strong will exerting itself on you. Oh yes. I know all about those things too. How could you know about that? When Tokimasa was in possession of it, he believed it showed him a path to the realm of the gods. He wrote extensively on the subject. Though unlike most, I don't discount such phenomena as the ravings of a madman when the phenomena repeats itself. You... Do you look into the inky blackness and see familiar shapes in the shadows? Not shadows. I see and hear people who are supposed to be dead. I find things I couldn't possibly have found otherwise. Hmm. Most interesting. Tell me, detective. Uh, oh, uh, apologize. Do you mind if I call you that? I don't remember telling you I was a detective. Ha ha ha. My mistake. Uh, you must forgive me. A uh, slip of the tongue. I believe it was the way you carried yourself. Determined investigators such as yourself have a sense of purpose with their mannerisms, you see. And you do seem rather determined to get to the bottom of whatever it is you're chasing. Tell me. Does me telling you that your experiences are not an illusion provide you any level of comfort? I'm not sure. But I do feel something. Maybe hope? It's like I finally got a foothold on solid ground. Ah, yes. Knowledge is a light in dark places, is it not? To think a relic of such import would end up with a detective. Do you mind if I ask you something? Which do you believe? Our lives are controlled by fate, pre-measured threads that determine our deeds, our wishes, and our ends the minute we come into existence? Or conversely, is our threads subject to the chaos inherent in our universe instead? Does it change according to our deeds, and that which happens to us seemingly by accident? Do you believe it is fate? A chance that decides which threads of life are cut short, and which are followed. That's interesting. I don't, I don't know how our detective would view this. This is the question of free will, isn't it? Like, is everything predetermined for us, or are we actually able to make choices? And more importantly to us, what would our detective say? Hmm. She did what the mask told her to do initially, and we shot and killed Reyna. The second time, though, when the mask wanted me to kill Mai, I refused to do so. So we've been under the control of its influence, where we were doing acting out fate. But the other time, we were, I, th I hope, able to actually make a choice and not kill Mai. So I think... I think our detective will go for the we decide answer. Oh no. Do I have a glitch? Oh, no! Oh, okay. 
Wow, what the heck happened there? Was that, was that just hidden? I think I had to pop up this in order to see it. So we're going to go with fate. Yes, of course. Maybe you feel your life has been somewhat out of your control as of late. Control, huh? To be honest, I don't feel like I've had much of that since the mask came to me. You said that the mask was made by the old Kamen Kai. Why? Confusing me can't be the purpose it was made for. Ah, yes. A more complicated answer than you might have wished for. Indeed. It should come as no surprise that the creation of such a mysterious object is equally enigmatic. Perhaps you could do me a favor. Don't worry, it is in relation to this very topic. An important book has gone missing from my shop. If you could retrieve it for me, I feel it could shine a great deal of light on the subject. What kind of book? A book of the missing variety. <laughs> I'm sorry, I jest. It concerns the mask bearer. Mask bearer? Huh. That's, uh, that's me, right? Although you carry it, that does not make you its bearer. All will become clear when the book is returned to me. Sounds easy enough. Where can I start looking? We should go back to Akihabara, which is where the books we saw a bookseller there. Oh, you needn't go far. The man who has it is right outside this building, in fact. As I said, it's not much of an errand, but I, of course, cannot leave my shop. He's right outside? This won't take long. I'll be right back. Oh, is it the guy who sells the octopus? It must be. He's the only guy I see around here. Do you know anything about the tea shop? Ah, the old tea shop next door? Isn't that place closed down? Uh, closed? No, that can't be right. What else do you know about it? Pure conjecture on this one, but I think it might be owned by the kendo instructor from the dojo down the street on account of him being the only one I ever see in there. You might not believe me, but I swear I saw him in there chatting away to himself. Uh, possibly he's a little nuts. Then again, it might be some super awesome kendo meditation technique. Oh man, why didn't I think of that before? Next time I ought to ask him for some pointers instead of spying on him, huh? Word through the grapevine is that he's a regional champion or something. He's trained some of the best. Lots of cops train with him too, so he must be good. I mean, he's not so crazy after all. Speaking of which, I have a bit of a crazy question for you. I know you said it was closed, but do you know anything about a book taken from there? Maybe recently? I was led to believe you would. <gasps> I, uh... I, oh, jeez. Go on. Uh, like I said, the place has been empty for years, but, you know, I spend a lot of time outside of it, and half the time the door is wide open. So one day, a few months back, I decided to take a look around. Uh, nothing suspicious or anything. I was just curious, is all. <clears throat> curious I killed the cat, right? Anyway, it was all dusty and old, and there were all sorts of weird stuff laying around. So I might have taken a little souvenir. I mean, it wasn't super old or nothing, so I figured no one would miss it. Besides, it wasn't for me. It was for my kid brother. That guy can get deep into the dump sometimes, so I try to be on standby for what happens next, you know. So I figured a little gift would cheer him up. And back then, he was going through some particularly tough times. His bitch wife, part of my language, miss, uh, had left him and taken their kid daughter with her. He still doesn't talk about it, like he's in denial or something. Oops, I got off track again. Uh, I was heading to visit him with the, uh, ill-gotten book when I got this phone call saying he was in the hospital. He OD'd on expensive sake and sleeping pills. Thank God the idiot decided to do it at the bar he owns with the door unlocked. A customer came in and called an ambulance. If it weren't for that, I'm not sure if he'd still be here. That's quite a story. Sounds to me like he wanted to be found. Yeah, I think so too. I think he was trying to ask for help in his own way. In any case, I took the book to him while he was in the hospital. Tried to show him that even when he was at his lowest, there was someone out there trying to do something nice for him, you know? I think it helped. For a minute, anyhow. As soon as the doctors let him leave, he went right back to that toxic little bar. I hope he's okay. He's got issues, but he's my little brother, and I worry about him. He's not been answering my phone calls lately. 
Originally, my brother's bitch ex-wife, sorry again, had the brilliant idea to put his skills, his skill to work in a cheap part of town. Despite that, he's holding on to it with everything he's got. The place is slowly bankrupting him, but he won't let it go. All he has to do is sign some paper and move on, but he can't. Something about it suck its claws deep into him. I've been trying to get him to join me in my business for years. He's a great chef. We could make a killing. Maybe it's not the same thing as owning a whole bar, but serving passers-by and getting some sunshine is good for the soul. Plus, food stands are doing really well abroad, I hear. Much better than wasting away in Shinjuku, at any rate. Shinjuku? Oh, this is Daizo he's talking about. He does look a little bit like Daizo. Yeah, it's like a little side street. Anyway, if that book is important to you, he'll probably still got it at his place. You want the address? Wait, I knew you looked familiar. Your brother's Daizo, right? Oh, you know him. A small world. It was probably the smile on my face that threw you off. Tell him that his brother Haruto says hi. While you're at it, tell him that Takoyaki, uh, is that right? No. Takoyaki stands are still the future of cuisine and to get his butt over here. <laughs> I'll do that. Thanks for all your help. Before we leave, we're just going to walk down the street and see if there's anything else to click on. Should we go back in and tell the brother that the tea... Oh, nope, we can't. Let's say, tell, tell the brother that the tea shop isn't actually real. I'm sorry, the tea shop is real, but the person in it he's talking to doesn't actually exist. Okay, so let's see if we're locked to going to Shinjuku, if we can go to other places as well. We can only go to Shinjuku. Or, sorry, uh, Shinjuku. While we're here, we might as well visit all the places again, if I'm able to. See how people are doing. We can't visit the Butterfly Club, never mind. Yeah, he does look so sad compared to, uh, to his brother. Hi, Yami. How can I help you today? Hey, Daizo. How are things? Oh, you know. Same old, same old. Funny thing, I met your brother while I was in Asakusa today. Haruto? You met Haruto? What are the chances? Who knows? Maybe it was preordained. Huh. Who'd have thought? So, is he still saying... Is he still selling takoyaki at his stand? Did he say anything? He is. He said to remind you that takoyaki stands are the future of cuisine and that you should go and help him. <laughs> you talked to Haruto, all right. Always an optimist, that guy. I actually have a favor to ask you. Do you still have the book your brother gave you a few months ago? Heh. <laughs> the only thing that guy ever gives me is headaches. Not sure if I can help you, Ayami. He said he gave it to you when you were in the hospital. Oh, I... Uh... What makes you think I was at the hospital? I don't even go to the hospital for checkups. <laughs> Besides, that dolt's bringing me stuff all the time. Always trying to drag me kicking and screaming over to where the grass is greener. This would have been more recently. After a rough patch. Maybe it was stupid to come and ask. No, no, no. It's fine. That idiot. Always running his mouth. Freaking traitor. Heh. <laughs> Those were just some, uh... Hard times. Nothing serious. <laughs> I just drank too much is all. I'm sorry, Detective, but I don't want to talk about it. All right, understood. I'm not here to dig up bad memories, Daizo. Thanks. Uh, you said you were looking for a book, right? Truth is, I don't remember a book. I do remember Hirato giving me an old magazine, though, back in the hospital. It was one of those ones I used to read when I was younger, when things weren't quite so complicated. Wait. Uh, wait there a second. I may have it in the storeroom still. Uh, dang it. Uh, sorry, Yami. Ho hold on a second. I'm amazing how much junk someone accumulates over the years. Maybe, maybe I should throw some of this old stuff out, huh? Uh, here it is. It's yours, Detective. The Mask Bearer. 
Interesting. Huh. Hey, no wonder I recognize that photo you brought by. It's the same girl. An idol named Ruby. Reina. No, Ruby. See? It says so right there on the cover. Pretty crazy that it's still in my shop. I guess that means you're still looking for her. Hmm. I wonder why we keep running into each other. It must be fate. Eh, I don't buy it. You're a hell of a detective. You must have a pretty sharp nose. Ha! Ah, if you say so, Daiso. Do you mind if I take this? Like I said, it's yours. About time I started getting rid of some of my old junk. Thank you. See you around, Ayami. Take care, Daiso. While we're here, we'll, we just walk down the street, see if there's anything else we can click on. Not that, though, because we still don't know a code. We could go back in here, but I don't see why we would. Oh, uh, maybe we maybe we should. Try stop by and see all the people we've been we've been seeing. No, the the kid's not here. I forget his name. And I, and I forgot it last time as well, but thankfully our detective remembers. Yep, not talking. Alright, so let's... I guess we're going right back immediately to the, uh, to the tea shop. Yep, the only place we can go is, uh, is Asakusa. Asakusa? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Can we talk to the brother again really quick before we go into the tea shop? We can only buy octopus balls, so we'll be okay. Don't need those. Ah, welcome back, detective. Is that my book I see in your hands? Guess I'm a little surprised. Are you trying to tell me that Reyna is the mask bearer you talked about? That's hard to believe. Uh, does it surprise you? After all, it is she who you see in the dark. Is it not? The dark. That's what the collector called it too. How'd Reyna get tied up in all this? I only know that fate has intertwined the girl's life with the forces in the mask. But the machinations behind those circumstances are a mystery, I'm afraid. People always see history as something in the distant past, involving old men and black and white pictures. But that book... And the girl are as much a part of history as the rest. The threads that connect the past to the present and people to each other are not always apparent. This reminds me a little bit of Eternal Darkness and how through the history, all the people were bringing the necessary items to, uh, to the, the one girl in her mansion. And it showed like some, some of them would die, but they'd be able to, to get a little more information and bring that information slowly throughout the the decades and centuries to where it needed to end up it was such a great uh, I was such a great game and they never made another one but peel back the layers of connection and the randomness of our universe neatly orders itself a teen idol an ancient order the tool they created the detective who holds it now all forming a neat and tidy line Reina was some sort of idol living in Tokyo not part of a sleeper cell of some cult. It doesn't add up. On that, detective, we can agree. So why don't we start at the beginning? To how the mask ceased to be a mere object. The story starts in ancient times, in the year 1333. At that time, Kamakura was the capital of Japan. Led by the Hojo clan, it was a time of peace, prosperity, and enlightenment. Peace among men is cyclical, and I'll, unlike so many before them and so many after, uh, the time of peace came to an end. The Nita clan, loyal to Emperor Go Daigo, led a siege against the Hojo-controlled Kamakura, taking the city as the tide receded, leaving a key passage open to the invaders. 
The Hojo clan fled to the caves of their family temple. For them, there was no hope of victory or escape. They chose to retain their honor. Instead of surrendering, the 870 Hojo samurai, including the last three reagents, regents, committed mass suicide. However, the Hojo and Nita clans, embroiled in their quests for empire, could not see the role they played in the plans of another group, the religious sect known as the Kamen Kai. Like, yes, yep, we had that right. It is said that in the flames of Kamakura, a girl was seen wandering the streets, observing the carnage of the burning city. A girl lost to the histories by the name of Chikako Sh Shijishu. Dicho? Chikako Shijichu. Jijicho? The last survivor of Kamen Kai. Okay. So whatever the Kamen Kai were trying to do, they failed. I mean, they all died, right? No. They did not fail. Everything went exactly as planned. Chikako Shijucho did not... I, I'm sorry, everyone. I can't pronounce this. That's Shi... Shi she Chi Jo? She Chi Jo? Did not survive by chance. She was chosen. Chosen for what? To receive the blessing of all the spiritual energy that so much death afforded. To become the first mask bearer. Mask bearer? The common Kai used the deaths of all those people to create this. Why? Legend has it, the Kamen Kai sought to contain the door, a rift leading to the spiritual realm, where our consciousness ceases to be and time holds no meaning, a place where cause and effect could be changed. Why? Why spend so much human life and give up so much to do that? To stop it from being abused. Imagine being able to see the world as a god so that the flow of time and the rules which govern our world are of no consequence. This is the power of the door. To a mortal mind, obsessed with the finality of death and meaningless accomplishment, so much power would corrupt absolutely. A power over death. So a dark place was created to obscure the door and hide it from mortal eyes along with the tool to control and see within the darkness. It's true. All of it. It sounds like a fairy tale, but it's true. Finding the door could be the key to bringing Tanaka back. Some doors, no matter how strong they call to us, are not meant to be opened. And the common Kai willingly gave their lives to keep it that way. The mask opens the mind to all who come in contact with it, but it is intended for its bearer. Using it to find the door may destroy you. Maybe you're right, but I could at least use it to find my way in the dark. Just like the collector said. The only thing I don't get is how Reyna is connected to it. That is a mystery. As Mr. Kawana told you, the last known location of the mask was the Kamen Kai cult only a few decades ago. Much was suppressed about the Kamen Kai under Tokimasa. They existed. And then, on March 4th, 1996, they met their end. There were many theories. The police killed them during their raid of the compound or that someone, with, someone within the cult had snapped and murdered the others. Nothing but conjecture, I'm afraid. The real answer lies somewhere deep within police records, and though I remain curious, is not something I have access to. Perhaps the best place to start is there. Finding out about the last days of the common Kai may help light your path to the truth. Though I wonder if such an object, bred from suffering, can truly put an end to it. Is it you 
who can finally break this terrible cycle. I've spent a long time here. I'm tired. So tired. Farewell, detective. Sitting there comfortably, the historian Yasuhisa casually laid out everything that I was experiencing like he was reading it out of a book. A mass suicide, ancient groups, and the door to the spiritual realm. It sounds like a myth. An interesting story told to travelers in the bygone era. It's hard to believe it relates to Kazuki and Reina. I can't see it. A bridge between the Kamakura samurai and a young girl. He said Reina fit into the story. She's a mask bearer. But how? Yashuhisa, the collector, I thought when I'd met them, I'd entered their world and could start to understand, however faintly, but my intuition as a detective tells me they're hiding something from me still. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I need to keep going. What day is it anyway? How long have I been chasing these leads? Day turns to night, the hours bleed into each other. Even the seasons don't seem to follow the natural order anymore. Everything's blurring together. Oh, my head. Maybe I should take my medication? Impossible as it seems, following the old man's hunch is my best bet to finally understanding the mask. Even Takashi didn't know what happened to the Kamen Kai. Find the police report is the way forward. A few weeks ago, it would have been easy for me to ask around and pull a file. It'll be a bit more difficult now, I imagine. Hmm. What's the worst that can happen? I should head to the police HQ and see what I can find. And we've been playing for looks like 40 minutes or so. Let's let's stop here, and in the next episode we will see where we can go. We might go back to our our home, uh, see our neighbor, take a pill, and then. Uh, go over to the police HQ. But first, I'll probably see if we can talk to the brother, whose name I've forgotten already, and see if he can tell us, uh, I'm sorry, see if we can t tell him about what happened with this mask. In any case,